Merry Christmas everyone, this is Game Frost, and today I will review the Gateway GWTN141 laptop. It's quick, small, and cool to the touch. So is this $400 laptop great for 2021? Let's find out. Gateway was a very popular PC company back in the late 90s to early 2000s. After the company went bankrupt, Acer acquired it in 2007. Now, Gateway is alive again but under Acer's management. This Gateway laptop is not built by Acer but a Chinese company who called themselves GPU Company. I am not kidding. This is shown in the BIOS and Windows itself. Now, Gateway is basically an exclusivity in Walmart, so you may see a lot of Gateway laptops on their shelves. Okay, enough of the history. It's time to know what's included in the box. Inside, we get the 14.1 inch laptop, a charger, and a THX card with a manual. The laptop size is the following. Its height is 8.75 inches, length is 13.1 inches, and the width is 0.75 inches, and has a 1080p LCD IPS display, so picture quality shouldn't be a problem. The I.O. of the laptop has a lot of options. It has one Type-C port, two USB 3.0 ports, one micro SD slot, one headphone port, which is pretty good as newer laptops ditch this feature, a charging port, an HDMI port, a SAD 1.0 MP camera, built-in stereo speakers, and a Kensington lock. So, so far, the I.O. on this laptop is pretty good. Now for the best part, the internals. The CPU that powers the whole laptop is an i5-1135G7 processor that has a base clock of 2.4 GHz and a boost clock of 4.2 GHz at 28 watts. It has a 16 gigs of LPDDR4 memory clocked in at 3200 mega transfers. For storage, it has 512 gigs stored in an M.2 drive rated at SATA 3. I'm not sure if NVMe works on this laptop, but there is an NVMe option included in the BIOS. The GPU itself is an 80 EU Iris XC graphics that is paired with the 1135G7. It is a capable iGPU, but Vega from AMD is still better in terms of performance. The battery itself is capable, lasting up to 10 hours of use if you are not gaming or using light software. Turning this laptop on, we are greeted with the gateway splash screen. To enter the BIOS, you must hit the delete key once or twice to get in. This BIOS is very extensive, ranging from CPU configuration to overclocking. It has everything. Keep in mind that the overclocking tab does not work at all. Just enab enabling it breaks the entire laptop. To bring it back, you must open the laptop's casing and unplug the battery. Then plug in the AC adapter to, to the laptop and power it on. After a few seconds, the splash screen should come back. Turn off the laptop and replug the battery connector back to the motherboard. The only thing I changed in the laptop in this is the CPU's TDP settings. So I set the PL1 and PL2 to 28 watts. So when gaming, the CPU can turbo and the GPU can utilize the game at full speed with the cost of battery life. After the laptop's main Windows 10 setup, I then updated the laptop and upgraded to Windows 11 immediately. And so far the, experiment, the experience has been smooth sailing. Programs were snappy and the battery life was excellent. Now for the fun part, benchmarking. What's included in this benchmark are games, emulation, and general use, meaning web browsing, playing YouTube videos, etc. For games, I haven't downloaded much because of my slow internet and storage concerns, but I have Minecraft and Roblox. For emulation, I have Super Smash Bros. 3DS on Citra and Tekken 6, Tekken 6 on the PSP emulator, which are, you know, light emulators. 3D Mark, Geekbench, Signbench, and CPU-Z are also included in this test. So now it's time to know if this laptop is worth it in late 2021 and 2022. All of this is recorded in OBS built-in. My capture card is limited to 30 FPS, so I decided to just record in the laptop at 60 FPS using the DXC graphics. So there might be a 1 through 5 FPS loss in some games.
ready. Round one. Fight. KO. You win. Round two. Fight. You win. Get ready for the next battle. Round one. Fight. You win. Round two. Fight. In conclusion, this laptop is perfect for $400 in 2021. I can't believe how good it runs on various types of software including emulation. I know that the two emulators are light but given how Smash Bros 3DS is kind of intensive, in some scenarios it still stabilizes at near 60fps. Even if the laptop is exclusive at, in Walmart, it packs a punch in terms of price to performance. Thank you guys so much for watching this holiday review video. If you want to see a better review video about this laptop, I suggest you watch ETA Prime's video on, of this laptop. Anyways, I hope you all have a great Christmas and have a happy new year. Oh, and if we can get up to 800 subs before the end of 2021, that will be greatly appreciated. We are nearly reaching our goal, 
So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Bye, everyone, and I will catch you all next year.